Welcome to another Tech Help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I'm your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a main menu for your Access database. I'm going to show you two methods, one for the beginners, which is just some nice, easy buttons, and then another method for developers where we'll make a list box that's pulled from a table where all you have to do to update your menu is just update the table, right? So we're going to cover both of those real quick in today's video. Now, I've got several other videos where I go about all the different kinds of ways you can make menus. You can use switchboards, you can use navigation forms, and I also show you how to make the quick buttons. But lots and lots of people constantly ask me this, and people don't want to sit through a long video to learn how to do this. So I'm going to show you real quick how to do it. All right, here's my Tech Help free template, and in here I built this simple main menu that's got a couple of buttons. You click on the button, it opens a form. You click on the button, it opens a report. Okay, how do I do that? Well, I'm going to close this guy. We're going to start from scratch. We're going to go to create, and then we're going to go to form design. This guy, big blank form. I like to start off by giving the form some color. So we'll pick format and maybe give this guy a green background. Okay, if you want to put a label across the top, you can. Form design, grab a label, make a nice big main menu across the top here, right? Give it some color. And you can do all this and play with, you know, the different settings and make it white and do whatever you want. Make it giant. All right. So there's your main menu label. And you can make it pretty. I'm just showing you the, the, the quick and dirty. Okay. Now, to get the buttons on here to open forms, you go to form design. You hit the command button. You drop it right there. A wizard's going to start up. You pick form operations, open a form, hit next. Pick the form you want to open, like customer form. Hit next. You want to find uh, specific records or show all the records? Well, we'll just pick all the records. I cover this other option in my other video. I'll give you links to all that down below. All right, so we're just going to show all the records. Hit next. Give it text or a picture, whichever you want. I'm going to put in here customer form or customers or whatever you want it to say. Next, give it a name. I like to call it like customer form button or whatever, but that's optional. You don't have to give it a meaningful name and then hit finish. All right. And there you go. There's your real simple button that opens that form. Now I'm going to save it. Control S. We're going to call this my main menu. I'm going to call it main menu two because I already have a main menu. Main menu two F. Hit OK. I like to end all my forms with the letter F. Close it. And now when I open up my main menu two, there it is. All right. Click a button. And there's the customer form. It's that simple. Same thing for reports, right? Go to design view, command button, drop a button underneath it, right? Go to report operations, preview a report. Make sure you pick preview. If you don't pick preview, it's going to spit right out on your printer. So I like to pick preview. Okay, next, pick a report. I'll use my customer R. All right, text, customer. Oh, I can't type today. Customer report. Next, give it a meaningful name, customer, our button, and then finish. And there's your customer report button. And you can spend your time making these buttons look pretty and whatever else you want to do. Save it, close it, open it, click it. There's your report. See that? Real simple. Not that hard to do. You can put as many buttons on here as you want. I got some pretty complicated menus I've designed. In my Access Beginner Level 7 class, I show you a lot more detail on how to build these crazy looking menus with all kinds of stuff on them. So I'll put a link to that down below. Now, there are some other things I do like to change. For example, this is what's called an unbound form. It's not bound to a table, right? This is a bound form. That means it's got fields in it that pull off the customer table. All right, so you need the record selector, you need the navigation buttons. You don't need those on a menu form. So I'm gonna go right click, Design view, I'm going to pull up the forms properties by double clicking on that box right there, right? Property sheet form, go to format, and then we're going to turn off some stuff, all right? Record selectors, we don't need those. Navigation buttons, we don't need those. Um, scroll bars, we don't need those, okay? And you could turn off other things like the control box, uh, the max min buttons, anything else you feel like you don't need, all right? Save it, and while I'm at it, I'm going to resize this guy just a little bit. We're going to do that, and we're going to come over here and do this. Doesn't need to be that big, right? Save it, close it, open it. Now it's starting to look more like a menu, right? Maybe give it a caption. Right-click, design view, back to the properties, format, caption, main menu. 
menu. If I can type today, right? Save it, close it, open it. There you go. Want to make a secondary menu under that one? Sure, do the same exact thing and just make one of these buttons open up the other menu. Let's pretend that this is a secondary menu, right? Design view, button over here, form operations, open a form, next. Where's my, my first main menu? Next, we'll call this the you know second level menu or whatever you want to call it, All right? Next, maybe this is like the administrator's menu or whatever, menu two button. Okay, and now this is the button that will open up the second level menu. We'll put it down here. We'll slide this over like that. Save it, close it, and now I'll open up this guy. That's my main menu. And then click, and it opens up my secondary menu. Just slide it over here, maybe. Hit Control S to save it. It should save it in that spot. Newer versions of Access are pretty good about this. Older versions of Access, it lost the form positioning a lot. All right, and then the secondary menu can have other stuff on it. And so that's the basics. That's the basic part of how to make a main menu. Okay, now you didn't have to sit through a 20 minute video. You got it in three. <laughs> All right, so that's gonna do it for the beginner portion of this video. So beginners, you're, you're done. Bye, see you, beat it, get out of here. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just kidding. All right, developers were up. Now, if you're not a developer and you wanna be, if you wanna learn this crazy VBA stuff all the cool kids are talking about, well, go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long. It'll teach you everything you need to know to get started. And we're going to do some pretty cool stuff with just a little tiny bit of VBA. All right, you ready? All right, this menu is nice and all, but every time you want to add a button or change things or whatever, you've got to go into the form design and blah, blah, blah. But wouldn't it be nice if you could just change the menu with data from a table so you didn't really have to make design changes to the database? Well, you can. Let's go back to my stock main menu here. All right, I'm going to go into here, design view. I'm going to delete all these buttons. Goodbye. All right, we're going to replace it with a list box. Now, the list box needs some place to get its data from. So let's create a table. Create table design. And I'm going to call this the menu table. All right. Or excuse me, this should be the menu ID, right? It's the menu table, but the menu ID goes first. All right. How about a description? How about the object name? Right, what object are you opening, form or report? And then a sort order. Where do you want it in that list? Right, you just, you know, one, two, three, four, and so on. All right, save this as the menu table, menu T, uh, auto number, yep, primary key. And let's put some stuff in here. Let me make this a little bit bigger. All right, so you just put the stuff in here in the order you want it. So let's start off with my customer list. That'll be the customer list F. We'll make that the first item. All right, the customer form could go next. Customer F, that's two. Uh, what else we got in here? We got the contact form. All right, contact F or contact form, contact F, and that'll be number three. We've got the uh, customers with contacts form. That's customer contact F, that'll be number four. We'll do the orders, order F. And then we'll do a report. I think I have a customer report in here. We'll use. Yeah. Customer report. Customer R. Now, notice my naming conventions are important here because if you've been a good little Access developer and you've followed me since Access Beginner Level 1, you know that I end all of my forms in an F and all of my reports in an R. There are many, many reasons why I do that. I talk about them in detail in my full course. But this is one of them. I can tell what kind of object that is just by looking at its name, right? If you don't do this, you'll need another field in here. And you can put either an F or an R in it or a one or a zero or whatever you want to indicate what type of object this is. But since I have a good naming convention, I can tell from the object name. All right, save that. Now that we've got our menu table, we can make a list box. So form design, find list boxes right there. We're gonna drag it right here. Okay, uh, get the values from a table or query, yup. That's gonna be the menu T, yup. Bring over all the fields. Next, what do you wanna sort it by? My custom sort order. Next, now here's what the columns look like. The key column is hidden, that's fine. That's column zero, remember that. Column one is my description. That's the only column that I want to be visible. Column two has the 
object name in it. We need that so we know what we're opening, right? So let's hide that. And the sort order, I need that also. Otherwise, the list box can't properly sort it, which is kind of silly, but that's how it works. And we also don't want to see that. So I'm going to make the width of that zero as well so we don't see those in the box. Okay, you with me? All right, next. What description do you want? Now we're going to delete it anyways and then hit finish. All right, so here's the list box. There's the little label that comes with it. We're going to delete that. Goodbye. All right, and this is going to be our menu. And I'm going to put it here. I'm going to make it a little wider. Um, I'm going to make it so the background is maybe that lighter blue. Make the text a bit bigger, maybe 16 point. All right. All right, let's call this guy. Let's give it a good name. Go to all here, and we're going to name this my menu list. Okay, save it, close it, open it, and ooh, look at that, that's pretty. This is a little bit too wide for that guy, so let's redesign a little bit. This stuff over here doesn't need to be this wide. We can do this. Yeah, I know, it makes my logo not quite centered. We can, you can move things around. You, you can make it look pretty on your own. I'm just going to show you how to make it functional. <laughs> All right, save it, close it, open it. All right, looks great. Now, how do we get where we're going? I can click on this, but it's not doing anything. So we need an on double click event. So when the user double clicks on one of these, you can make it a single click event too if you want. If you want to just click on it once and it goes there, that's fine. I prefer a double click event. So we're going to right click, design view, open up this guy's properties, go to events, find on double click right there. All right, hit the dot, dot, dot builder button. That brings up my code builder. And there's a bunch of extra spaces in there. I'm going to get rid of that. And here we are in the menu list double click event. Now, first thing I want to do is take a look at the object name that we're opening. Let's throw it in a variable. So dim object name as a string. And we're going to set that object name string equal to the menu list dot column two, whatever's in column two, right? That's that object name from the list box. It's hidden, but now we got it in a variable. Now it's easier to deal with. Now I can say if write object name comma one equals an F. That means if the right one character is an F, then I know I got a form, right? Then do command open form object name. No quotes. Else if the right of object name comma one is an R, then do command open report object name comma, don't forget to pick the AC preview from the list, right? AC preview. Let me show you that again, because I know it's off the bottom of the screen there. I'll slide this up. It was object name. And then when you hit the comma, you get the IntelliSense, right? So make sure you pick AC preview. Okay. Otherwise, it's not an F or an R. At this point, I don't know what to do with it. So a message box, you know, bad name or whatever you want to put in there. End if. Okay. Save it. Always a good idea to hit debug compile once in a while. Close it. Close it. Open it. And then customer form. Double click. Boom. There it is. Slide it over here. Right. Close it. Contact form. Boom. There it is. All right, order form, boom. See? And now if you want to make changes, you can do it at the table level. You don't got to push new updates to all your front ends, all your other users, right? Customer report, boom, there it is. See? Now there's all kinds of stuff you could do with this. You could have it open up other menus. You can have it cascade menus. You can have this, have more menus load up inside the same list box. Uh, there's a million things. I could probably spend hours on just making cool little menus like this. So if you'd like to see more of this kind of stuff, you want to see me make more cool menu stuff, post a comment down below and let me know. And then, of course, you know how I work. The squeaky wheel gets the grease. So if enough people are interested, I'll make more videos on it. And as far as a lot of the other things I covered in this video, like dim variables, if then, the right function, a message box, columns, all that stuff, I've got videos that cover all that stuff, plus I cover it in my full developer course. I'll put links to all of that stuff down below. But that's going to be your tech help video for today. Hope you learned something. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video, hit that thumbs up button right now and give me a like. Also, be sure to subscribe to my channel, which is completely free.
and make sure you click that bell icon and select all to receive notifications whenever I post a new video. Do you need help with your Microsoft Access project? Whether you need a tutor, a consultant, or a developer to build something for you, check out my Access Developer Network. It's a directory I put together personally of Access experts who can help with your project. Visit my website to learn more. Any links or other resources that I mentioned in the video can be found in the description text below the video. Just click on that show more link right there. YouTube's pretty good about hiding that, but it's there. Just look for it. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access, including building forms, queries, reports, tables, all that stuff. It's over four hours long. You can find it on my website or my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below you can click on. And did I mention it's completely free? And if you like level one, level two is just $1. That's it. And it's free for members of my YouTube channel at any level. Speaking of memberships, if you're interested in joining my channel, you get all kinds of awesome perks. Silver members get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, and there's hundreds of them by now. They also get one free beginner class each month, and yes, those are from my full courses. Gold members get the previous perks, plus access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos. Plus, you get access to my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions and all kinds of source code that I use. And gold members get one free expert class every month after completing the beginner series. Platinum members get all of the previous perks, plus they get all of my beginner courses, all of them from every subject, and you get one free advanced or developer class every month after finishing the expert series. And you can become a diamond sponsor and have your name listed on the sponsor page on my website. So that's it. Once again, my name is Richard Rost. Thank you for watching this video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned something today. Live long and prosper, my friends. I'll see you next time.